Today's show is sponsored by Adventures Unlimited Press. Take your mind on a literary journey and go to adventuresunlimitedpress.com to purchase books from our famed experts right here on Truth Be Told. That's adventuresunlimitedpress.com. Today's show... What's your thoughts on government cover-ups or covert societies attempting to control humanity? Do you believe in ancient astronauts, intergalactic communication, or extraterrestrial visitations? Ever had an experience with disembodied spirits or the paranormal universe? Are these subjects fact or fiction? Each week, Tony and Eddie explore these unbelievable realities and beyond. Exclusively on Truth Be Told. Hello and welcome back to another broadcast of Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm your host, Tony Sweet, and with me now, world-renowned psychic, Eddie Connor. Thanks, Tony, and hi, everyone. Here's a question. Do you believe that aliens walk among us? A lot of people do, and we're here to find out how and why. Eddie, our guest today, Dr. David Jacobs, is a researcher who has investigated over a thousand abduction events experienced by more than 150 abductees. And today, we will discuss his latest book, Walking Among Us, The Alien Plan to Control Humanity. Man, that's going to be good. Since 1973, Dr. Jacobs has continued to devote most of his professional and personal energies to researching the UFO phenomenon in general and the abduction phenomenon in particular. Dr. Jacobs is one of the foremost UFO abduction researchers worldwide. As a result of his extensive primary research, he has developed the first scientific topology of the abduction process. Please put your hands together and welcome to the show, historian, UFO researcher, and author, Dr. David M. Jacobs. David, thank you so much for being on Truth Be Told. Well, thank you for having me. Well, this is exciting, and uh, this is one of our uh, favorite topics uh, that to talk about here on the show. And uh, Eddie and I are excited to talk about your latest book, uh, Walking Among Us, The Alien Plan to Control Humanity. Uh, but as we always say, our first, the first-timers, if you're on the, our show for the first time, we would like to go back in history and find out your journey. How did you get started in uh, UFO research, if you don't mind us asking? Well, I- I don't really know how I got started, but I got interested <laughs> in the subject when I was uh, an undergraduate at UCLA uh, uh, about 120 years ago, <laughs> and, uh, and I, uh, I just sort of got interested in it, and I, I kept my interest up, and uh, in 1966, my wife and I moved to the University of Wisconsin for uh, uh, graduate school, and um, I continued to to do research there, and I joined UFO organizations, and I eventually wound up as a an investigator and went out and and questioned people and all that sort of stuff, and uh, wrote articles about it, and and uh, and eventually uh, after I wrote my master's thesis on a completely and totally different subject, uh, but uh, I wound up writing my doctoral dissertation um, in. Uh, uh, on the controversy over unidentified flying objects in, in America from 1896 to 1973, and uh, I got my PhD in 73. So, um, and I stuck with it ever since then. And uh, I was lucky enough; uh, I, I taught at Temple University for 36 years. And, wow! And when I uh, I had I taught the only course on UFOs and then eventually abductions. That was a regularly scheduled, full credit, upper level uh, course um, uh, on the subject, uh, for, uh, and I taught that uh, all the way until I retired uh, in 2011. I, I believe that that is the only regularly scheduled course on the subject. Uh, uh, in, in, it was the only one in the United States, and I think I don't think that there's another one now like it. I may be wrong about that, but I haven't heard of it yet. Dr. Jacobs, can you take Tony and I and the audience back to the first time you were interviewing and talking to someone who was abducted and how that was such a, I'm, a, I'm assuming, a dramatic twist in your research 
from just the UFOs themselves, and then you're now talking to the abductees. Tell us how that was the first time you had that interview, that experience. Well, the very first time I I, I did hypnosis with an abductee was probably the best session I ever had, hmm. and not in a way that you're going to that you would think about it, oh, okay. um, in, in a very very unique way. Uh, I had been working with uh, with uh, my friend Bud Hopkins for four years, uh, uh, talking to abductees and, and and sitting in on his sessions and and learning how he did it. And Bud Hopkins was a great pioneer in in abduction research. And it, I was, after four years of that, I was finally ready to do my first hypnosis with an abductee. I was nervous beyond description, and he had sent me uh, uh, a name from a woman who lived here in, in Philadelphia, where I am, and uh, um, uh, she had written him a letter saying she had experiences and all that. So uh, I was nervous beyond belief. I wrote out an induction in a 3 by 5 card and held it in my hand so she couldn't see it, because I wanted to sound like a pro, <laughs> as opposed to this was the first time I was ever doing it, and um, I had a little tape recorder with me, and we uh, sat. Uh, she laid down on a, my couch in the living room, and I sat in a chair, sort of behind her, so she couldn't see me. See, and uh, but she was uh, uh, heavily into channeling. Oh, uh, and she used to offer seminars in how to do cham- channeling for other people and that sort of stuff. So uh, I did my induction, and she went directly into her her hypnotic world, or basically just getting relaxed. Uh, I don't really, hypnosis is really the wrong word. It's just simple, straight uh, relaxation techniques. Okay. So uh, uh, she told me that uh, we had we had agreed that we would look at something when she was seven years old, which is something I would not do nowadays, but I didn't know what did I know in those days. And um, <laughs> this was August 1986. And I, uh, she she remembered consciously that 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 she was looking at a buttercup on the ground and in, in, in a park, and that she felt her arms around her and uh, that lifted her up into this uh, up into the sky, and uh, and she sort of that's what she that's what she remembered. So we did that, and, and she was actually with a friend, and she uh, was looking at a buttercup, and then there was she felt her arms under her. Uh, her body and 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 she was lifted up into this uh, UFO and she uh, recognized the person who had done it. She had known him from before, meaning she had been abducted before. She called him Cosmo. He had a page boy haircut. She told me, which of course I'd never heard before. And uh, and um, he uh, he took her into this room and he took her clothes off and he gave her an examination. Uh, did this, that, this, that. And then uh, there was sort of a, a reproductive uh, examination also, which she was very embarrassed to tell, tell me about. Then he got her up off the table, and they walked down a hallway, and she met a gray alien. And then she was required to um, put uh, uh, her hands on, on uh, the gray alien's head, and she felt affection and warmth and love coming from him. Uh, Cosmo was not a, uh, look, looked human. Uh, actually, hmm. uh, but this is a gray alien, and and then uh, after she took her hands off the head of uh, the gray alien, uh, the, the feelings disappeared, and then she continued walking down into a hall through the hallway into another room where there was a group of um, of aliens, uh, gray aliens who were sitting there, and they said that uh, they said they predicted that when she grew up she would be intelligent and and beautiful and strong and whatever and. And then uh, Cosmo uh, took her back out to the other room, got her close back on, and brought her back. And we talked about it afterwards for a little bit, and I was breathless with excitement. <laughs> I had done it. I had done it. Uh, 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 hypnosis with an abductee, and I got this. I got an, a, a case of it. It's a, a jewel. It's 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 a it's priceless. It's wonderful. It's great. Oh my God! I called up my friend Bud Hopkins, and I I, I compared notes on this and that. That night, I went upstairs to transcribe it onto my computer. Now, this is uh, 1986, so my computer was a dual floppy 8 oh, megahertz uh, Zenith computer. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> right. And so I thought that my tape recorder uh, would pick up every word she whispered. Oh. 
there was nothing. You could hear my voice fine. There was no answers whatsoever. I, 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 I just, I, I went into a cold sweat. I thought, oh my God, I've lost it. I've lost it. I've lost it. Oh my God. And um, uh, I was, it was ho- horrible. It was terrible. It was horrible. But she came back for another session, and then she came back for another session, then another session, and after several months, I said, now, Melissa, remember that very first session we did? And she said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, I had a little trouble with the tape recorder. <laughs> and I said, can we do that one again? She said, sure. So she's uh, looking at her buttercup, and she feels her arms around her, and uh, the guy takes her up, and she's a familiar guy. Uh, name, his name is Cosmo. He's got a page boy haircut. Uh, puts her, takes her in a room, takes her clothes off, puts her on a table, gives her an examination. There's a sort of reproductive examination also she's very embarrassed to tell me about. Puts her clothes back on, takes her back to the uh, park. I said, uh, Melissa, remember uh, you were walking to the hallway and you met that great alien? You had to put your hands on his head his head and you felt love and warmth and all that you said no uh, i don't remember that happening to me i said well what about when you went into this other room and there was uh the uh the, the council set up and you were going to grow up to be loyal brave courageous and true and all that she said i think that happened to my friend lydia not to me no and i that why that's why that was the best session I ever did because it showed me that I did not know what I was doing. I was a complete idiot. I had uh, and uh, I pu- I began to put into place uh, elements of the of the event that uh, uh, of my questioning, false questions and that sort of stuff, so that I could control mm. this situation a lot better. I vowed this was not going to happen to me again, and uh, it was a gift. That's that's the gift. The gift of showing me how stupid I was, <laughs> and uh, change, things changed after that. And uh, but I was I was fortunate enough to have that happen early on. For a lot of people, it never happens, and they tend to believe everything an abductee says, and that is a fatal error. Yeah, and I was gonna I was gonna say. Uh, now with over a thousand, what maybe what eleven hundred, twelve hundred now? Yeah. Wh- how do you still interview uh, abductees or no? Yeah, I still do. Uh, I've gotten I got away from it for a year, and now I'm back back involved with it again. Um, uh, the, the problem is that um, most people say the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Right. So so you get new people, and they're just going to say the same thing that everybody else did. Uh, and it's unusual for somebody to say something different. And when somebody says something different that you haven't heard before, you wait for other people to confirm uh, mm. that 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 event or whatever it was, and then you begin to have evidence. Because if one person says it and nobody else ever says it again, then then it's it's iffy. Now it depends on the person. And for example, one person I worked with. Uh, who I still work with every once in a while. Uh, she's been with me since 1987. And I know that she's extremely concerned. You know, all the people I work with more than a couple of times are concerned with their own memories and whether their memories uh, are, are correct or not. And they they understand the role of confabulation and they understand false memories and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, I teach them it. That's <laughs> what it boils down to. And... Uh, uh, so I, uh, it's it, it's 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 sort of more of the same stuff over and over again. I don't know if I can, if I can learn much more at at this point. To tell you the truth, uh, uh, I think I might have gone as far as I can go with the abduction phenomenon. Uh, that's you know it's, it's uh, 86, 96, 06, 16. It's 30 years by my count, and I have to do it on my fingers um, since mm-hmm. I first started doing abduction research and. Uh, uh, that might be enough for me. Uh, my whole life is geared towards watching television. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I do. well, that's you know that's something that you know thirty years is a long time, and thirty years of changing of culture uh, from the movies we've seen, uh, t- you know, slang terminology, uh, and you say a lot of the same stories. But have you seen the the because of the the movies that we've seen, has it got more enhanced when it, when some of the adu- abductees or the ones that say they are uh, a little more graphic? Oh, does it does it influence their yes. yeah 
Does it well, I'll tell you, if this was coming out of popular culture, I would not be talking to you uh, right. right now. Right. I'd be watching television. Right. <laughs> uh, That's true. Uh, the thing is, is that, um, and I've said this on, on, a, on a bunch of different inter- interviews, but, but, but it's critical to understand the three three pillars of the abduction phenomenon. That's what I was going to ask say, you. What's that? I'm going to write these down. Okay. <laughs> Number one, it's global. That's the most critical of, of them all. It is global. It is not an American phenomenon. It does not require American popular culture. Uh, it happens around the world. I cannot tell you every single country because I don't know what's going on in, uh, in Burma. And I don't know what's going on in North Korea, for example. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, but I personally have worked with people from Africa and South America and Asia and obviously Europe and so forth. And and I get emails and uh, all the time from from countries you never heard of uh, <laughs> who are who are abductees and and uh, it's it's all the same and and listening to abduction accounts is it can be it's exciting it's thrilling it's amazing and then eventually it becomes profoundly boring <laughs> because people are saying the same thing over right. and over and over and over and over and over again and and that that saying the same thing over and over and over again is good. Yeah, it is. Because uh, there are details about it that people don't know and that I've never let out and so forth. And and there and you can't you can't describe everything that happens uh, in abductions. Mm-hmm. But uh, abductees all go through the same route that all other abductees go through around the world. It does not matter their a level of intelligence or their level of education or 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 where they were born or 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 how they were born or why they were born or anything it's it's all the same and the human brain is not patterned does not contain patterns of information mm. related to being abducted on board a UFO with strange looking beings standing around you. That's not part of the human condition. Right, right. <laughs> In other words, this phenomenon, because it is global, is unique. There has never been anything like this in human history, and I can say that with absolute assurance. There's never been anything like this. People from around the world saying the same thing with the same details, the same instruments, the same this, the same that. Uh, who are not aware that anybody else is saying things like that? It, it's it's extraordinary. It's it's absolutely astounding. Uh, if this phenomenon is not happening, and if this just is a mind game, if this just comes out of people's minds, and I will tell you that ninety percent of the abduction phenomenon has never been in popular culture. But if you uh, uh, if it just comes out of their minds, then this is the most important thing we have ever found in terms of human mentality, human mm-hmm. cognition, human neurology. It's amazingly important if it's not happening. Um, however, that's one pillar, and a sideline. <laughs> <laughs> the other pillar is another pillar is it's intergenerational. If a person is an abductee, their mother or their father or both, as the case might be, or abductees or are, are an abductee, and uh, when they get married and have kids, their kids will all be abductees. And 99% of the time, abductees get married to non-abductees because the majority of uh, people in the, in the world are not abductees. You know, maybe only 5% are, maybe uh, a little less or a little more. So uh, the chances are that they're going to get married to a non-abductee. So one abductee can spread uh, through the generations, can can create many abductees. Uh, I used to think that, well, if the population pretty much stays the same or grows at a slow rate, eventually there will be more abductees than there are non-abductees. But the problem here is that the population has been expanding at an unbelievably fast rate. In other words... When I was born uh, uh, in uh, a, a, a year that was so long ago, nobody ever heard of this year. <laughs> 1942. Oh, my gosh. There were, no, I was kidding. <laughs> uh, there were, there were 2.3 billion people on Earth. 
today there's 7.4 billion people on Earth. That's in my lifetime. That's a huge population explosion. At the very least, the intergenerational aspect of it keeps up with the population growth. Now, it has other meanings as well, if that's the case. And we know that that is the case because, the, you know, it, it just explodes. So um, that means that there has to be more UFOs. That means that there has to be more, more aliens. That means that, there ha- you know, because this is a global phenomenon, they have, to t- they, they have to continue with the growth of abductees in the population, uh, abducting them, you know, many, many times a year and all that. So we have a growing phenomenon as well. The third p- pillar is the fact that it is um, clandestine. Hmm. It is secretive. And uh, in one of my books, can't remember which, I wrote a chapter on secrecy, and there's a lot of reasons for secrecy, but I wasn't smart enough to boil it down to one short sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and the sentence is, they're secret because they don't want us to know what they're doing. This is not good. No, no. <laughs> No. If this, they were here to help us and to heal us and to make us feel good about ourselves and whatever else, that, that, that would be wonderful and stop uh, uh, the environmental abuse and, and all that sort of stuff, uh, they, would, they would just do it. They would help us. I mean, we would be happy. It would be great. Uh, they, we'd know. But uh, this is not what they're interested in, in spite of what people might tell you about how they're here to heal the earth and all that. Uh, this is this has no interest in that I uh, that I have found in thirty thirty years of research. Uh, I have I have not found this at all. They are doing this uh, for their own reasons, and they don't want us to know why. Mm. So uh, so the, the those are the, the three main pillars. Uh, uh, of it, I think, and uh, when you put those three things together, it 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 it, it adds up to one word: run. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't run, crawl fast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that that's fascinating. And uh, one thing that when you said you were talking about your first abductee, and it actually caught my ear uh, when you said the kind of the humanoid and the gray, which. I found that funny together because you usually don't hear those two together. But in the in most of your abductees, is it the grays that are mostly doing the abductions? The way in which you look at the abduction phenomenon is that each UFO has a, a large or a smaller workforce within it. All of the aliens, no matter what they look like, all have tasks to do and they're all part of the workforce. So the gray aliens are part of the workforce. They do a lot of the, what's called table procedures. Um, they do other things as well. And within gray aliens, there's smaller ones who do more sort of grunt work, clean up, right. Uh, right. Get, come down and get people and bring them up to the UFO, squire them through the halls and all that. There are taller aliens, gray aliens, who, uh, who do more complicated uh, uh, events on the tables and, 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 and do the actual uh, examination and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, and uh, there are also aliens who look sort of crosses between human and alien, and I, 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 I used to call them early stage, uh, middle stage, and late stage, but now I've got... Their, it, there's humanoid stage, and then there's just plain human stage as well. And uh, who I, I call these hubrids, and these are the ones who are uh, uh, moving in, uh, uh, walking among us, as the uh, case may be. And um, uh, they all have their tasks. They are all bred to do their task. They're all part of the workforce. It's a top-down workforce. The top is uh, almost certainly the insect-like ones, or uh, insectolins, as I call them. I just uh, say insect aliens. I put the two words together and drop the E. The insectolins. Uh, they are they are the ones who give orders, and everybody else takes orders, from what I can gather. Now, they don't need to take too many orders because their brains, if they have them, or whatever nervous system they've got up there, uh, is geared towards their tasks. That's what they do. Um, by the time they become really human-like, who, who can actually live here, 
uh, their task is to live here. That is their task. That's what they were bred for also. Hmm. And uh, so you have to sort of uh, close in a little bit on on all the scattered ideas of what's going on here. It's it's a top-down hierarchy of sorts, of sorts, Um, uh, uh, just geared towards a certain goal. I mean, this is... Uh, they're here for a reason. It's goal directed. They're doing it, for, you know, uh, uh, because uh, in some way it it, uh, it fulfills uh, whatever job they've got to do. And uh, and uh, uh, it's 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 not what we used to think. Our evolution of how we thought about the subject, even in the abduction phenomenon, was started out primarily as being they're they're trying to figure out what makes us tick. They're trying to figure out. Uh, and what's inside of us, you know, they're 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 pulling people's heads out and off and looking in their insides and putting their heads back on or whatever they're doing, you know, just to see how what we're like and what our civilization is like because they're interested. Mm. They're visitors. That, that word still exists. They're visiting us, you know. Uh, that just couldn't hold. That that the evidence just did not show that once we got into it. It just it was it was not that at all. Uh, and then uh, my colleague Bud Hopkins discovered uh, uh, that some some woman, uh, he called me up one day and he said um, he did, just found the most amazing case he'd ever come across, just absolutely amazing. This is before I started doing hypnosis. This is like 1986, or, I'm sorry, 1985 or so. And he told me that uh, they, this woman uh, was brought into a room and there was this weird-looking baby that she had to hold uh, looked so I saw like a cross between human and alien, and the, I said, "Baby, what do you mean, baby?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, it was a baby." And this is the first time in human history, I think, that the word "baby" had ever been used uh, with the word "alien." You hmm. know, in the same <laughs> sentence, and uh, I, I couldn't get my brain around it. And and they wanted her to hold the baby. And uh, the abductee, I said, oh, hold the baby. I, oh, that's, you know, it was, just, it was nonsensical. Uh, and and then, then they said they wanted her to feed the baby. Oh. And I said, feed the baby? <laughs> what? Did, did she tell him that she can't feed the baby? She's not, you know, uh, yeah. lactating. She's not pregnant. She, uh, she wasn't even married and all that sort of stuff. And he said... Uh, yeah, she told me she couldn't feed the baby, but they forced her to put the baby to her breast anyway. And I thought to myself, in the good old days when I knew absolutely nothing, <laughs> that we would never, ever, ever be able to understand the minds of these aliens because they they valued form over function. Mm. Uh, in other words, the form is you put the baby to the mother's breast, but there's no function. Oh. There, she has no milk. Mm. She can't. She can't feed the baby, and I, I thought they they think in very different ways than we do. However, I was wrong. <laughs> oh, they had already simulated lactation. It's a common thing now uh, that I've heard many many times, and it ha- happens on a table. And uh, uh, I, I will ask the woman sometimes, you know, when you get out to the table, how do your breasts feel? And then they if they say heavy, I know that they're going to feed a baby eventually, whether they know it or not. And uh, it's 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 extremely common. People have sent me examples of breast milk that they shouldn't be having, and after an abduction and all that. Um, but uh, uh, well, uh, well, before before we go on, I, we're going to take just a real quick break for our sponsor. And when we come back, we're going to talk about walking among us, the alien plant to control humanity. This is something that is very fascinating, uh, and I can't wait to hear your research uh, on how you put this book together. So, so if you could uh, hold on one second. Uh, this is Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Tony. Sweet. I'm Eddie Connor, and we have Dr. David Jacobs with us. Like Tony just said, his latest book is Walking Among Us, which is about the alien plan to control humanity. We'll be right back in about a minute. Agriterrorism in the USA? Is it possible? Makes you wonder, could it be possible for our food to be poison? How will the public know which foods have been contaminated with toxins before it's too late? Heaven's Harvest wants to help you become independent of these rare but possible scenarios. Protect your future and become self-reliant with heirloom seeds. Grow your own garden. From urban to rural living, 
Heaven's Harvest Seeds are the answer to any type of scenario. Go to truthbetoldseeds.com and order your bucket today. Every type of vegetable you could imagine. Go to truthbetoldseeds.com or call 1-800-516-4773. When you go to truthbetoldseeds.com and purchase your bucket, you will get 5% off the original price. So order today at truthbetoldseeds.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Eddie Connor. I'm Tony Sweet. And we have with us Dr. David Jacobs. He's getting ready to tell us about his latest book, Walking Among Us. Wait, did I say that right? Yeah, Walking Among Us, The Alien Plan to Control Humanity. And this is what we love the most on this show. We love when, like, this is, like, Dr. Jacobs has done hundreds of hypnotherapy interviews. He's done lots of research. It's Tony and I talk about this until you've had an experience. You can say, no, that stuff doesn't exist all you want to. But when you see a ghost, when you see a UFO, when you have boob soreness because you were feeding an alien baby, (laughs) then that's when your experience authentically changes. And that's why we love having experts on the show that know their stuff and they're sharing it with our audience. And we love you for being here and doing that, Dr. Jacobs. Well, my pleasure, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and you know what one thing that we were we talking about just on the break i said it we've had many people many ufo experts and i said and this is not like a uh, uh putting this as a com- well it's really a comparison of saying uh ufo abductee researchers versus ufo researchers how yeah. it is the U- most ufo researchers are the ones that say they're here to help us they're you know they've stopped many wars and then the Some ones the that actually too. have done the research of yeah. abductees cattle mutilations how it's a different story yeah well it's one thing to say oh i think i saw a ufo and it's another one to say i was on it i was on the table <laughs> right and and it was in their authentic experiences that's what fascinates us right well the the reality of the situation if i can use that word uh is such that um uh, it's this is this is these beings program this is has nothing to do with 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 our problems on earth from what we can tell uh, from what i can tell anyway uh but 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 people people who do this kind of work are 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 brave individuals they're good people and uh and and some of them do work better than others and so forth but but there's so few of us around that yeah. uh it's 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 really awful it's terrible uh my next book is going to be a manual on just how to do hypnosis with abductees hmm. uh i'm going to try to standardize the field that is the field of five people and uh, uh, try to get, try to teach other people how to do this, but there's there's problems with it. In other words, if a young person, a young woman or a young man, gets interested in the subject and wants to do work and uh, you know doing uh, hypnosis with abductees, um, and they're let's just say 23 years old, and they get a hold of a 50 year old woman. Well, there, there's a, a sexual component to the abduction phenomenon, yeah. and there's a, which it is and it isn't, and uh, but there's there's a lot of stuff that that's very private, and a 50 year old woman is not going to tell spill her guts to a young kid, you know, right? And uh, so so they have to be older in my in my opinion, so they have to be like at least 40. But when you're 40 years old, you usually have a spouse, you usually have kids, and you've got a career or a job mm-hmm. of some sort, you know. And uh, very few people uh, want to then switch to uh, spending an inordinate amount of time dancing with aliens in some right. way. That's true. And so, uh, uh, so th- there's nobody coming up the pike. There's very few people who are, who who are doing this kind of work. It's it's awful because this is you know. If it's if it's happening, it's the most important thing that's ever happened in the history of humankind. And if it's not happening, it's the most important thing that's ever happened in the history of neurology. Yeah. So uh, there's 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 it it can't be unimportant any way you look at it. So, um, but there's very very few people uh, uh, around who do it. It's it's just a shame. It is. And 
of the people who do do it, there's there's several in other countries and all that, and you read their material and 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 you know it's they they don't know what they're doing to tell you the truth. They uh, they 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 t- tend to accept everything that an abductee says at face value, which is as I said before an error and. And and they they ask leading questions that are that that are ridiculously leading questions that just make no sense to me whatsoever and and uh, so it's it's a mess. Let's put it that way. It's just a mess. Even with a few we'll put it doing. just simply. It's a mess. So let's. Right. I've got a question for you. So do you ever feel like with all of this extraordinary work that you're doing? That one night you're driving home, it's like eight or nine o'clock at night or later. <laughs> know where this is going. There's no street lights on and that sort of thing, and your radio in the car gets a little fuzzy. Do you ever just once in a blue moon, Dr. Jacobs, just wonder if they've got their eye on you? And I'm completely serious by this question. Do you ever once in a blue moon wake up in the middle of the night and go, Is there somebody in my window? <laughs> The answer so far has been no. Okay, um, good. Uh, however, the, 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 it's more complicated than that. In other words, yeah. I've worked with uh, people who who don't like the abductee telling me things, and uh, um, oh. I've, I've worked with being. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I've worked with people whose hybrids around them do not like the idea that they're telling me things. And they have tried to get abductees to stop, and uh, there was one point when they uh, attempted to get me to stop, but they couldn't couldn't quite figure out where I was, and uh, the woman who I was working with uh, refused to to tell them where I was, 125 miles away from me, hmm. and um, and so uh, she ultimately stopped working with me uh, because the pressure was so great on both of us, but. Um, uh, that, that, I'll, I'll be writing a book about that. That'll be my last book before it's television time. Yay! And, yes. <laughs> then, um, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, I'm I abductees see uh, UFOs. Let's just say every single time. Every time they're abducted, they see a UFO. They're in one. Oh. Uh, I shouldn't exactly say that because sometimes they're not in a UFO, and that's a whole other story. Uh, uh, which you can get into later if we, if we want if you want, but um, but abductees have experiences on a UFO from the time that they're children, young children, all the way into old age, and with great rapidity. In other words, over and over and over and over and over again, uh, an enormous amount of uh, abduction events. It's not that somebody is abducted once or twice and that's it, and they're 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 released on their own recognizance. It's nothing like that. It just keeps going on over and over and over again. Uh, so the interesting thing about about the, the human memory is that people tend to remember things more when they're children. Uh, until I reach the age of around 11 or 12, yep. then they don't remember things like adults don't remember things. Yep. And because this is a clandestine phenomenon, the first person that it's kept secret from is the abductee. And they, they, they cannot remember what happened to them. They know something weird happened, and they know they were in one spot uh, uh, doing something, and then suddenly they were in another spot doing something, and it's three hours later, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and uh, they can't figure out what happened and how they got there. And, and uh, well, I guess I just won't ever think about this. And then they just go their merry way. Uh, and they don't remember at all what happened to them. Uh, so uh, uh, that that program of keeping it secret from abductees is extremely successful. Now, people see UFOs and are not abductees. Obviously, uh, people, you know, um, large numbers of people have seen them suddenly uh, at once. And and uh, there, we know that there's triangular-shaped UFOs, and we know that there's circular-shaped UFOs and, and, and all that. Uh, but the, uh, uh, if, however, a person sees a UFO at low level, treetop level, let's just say in their backyard at night, oh. That UFO is there for a reason, and they're standing out in the backyard for a reason. And they might remember that. Yeah, even though it's going to be an abduction event, they might remember seeing a UFO, and that's it. And they don't remember being abducted, uh, but that that happens. Here, here's a 
to sh- to show you how that works a little bit. Here's a uh, uh, an actual uh, event. This here's something that all UFO researchers and and not all, yeah, probably uh, well, certainly all abduction researchers and maybe most UFO researchers have heard many times over. And it has to do with um, driving the car, driving it down the road at night. When, let's just say. And the uh, guy is driving, the wife is in the, uh, next to him, two kids in the back. And the wife looks out of uh, the front windshield and says, oh, my God, look at that. And they see this UFO. Let's say it's during the daytime even. It doesn't even matter. It's this UFO, and it's off to the left of the side of the road, and it comes across the road, and it goes over, and it hovers over a field. So the abduct, uh, sorry, so the guy says, I pulled over to the side of the road to get a better look at that thing, and wham, it flew away at fantastic speed. And they were all amazed and all, and that was it. And I heard that story over and over and over again from all sorts of different people, just, you know, that, that they saw this UFO and they pulled over to the side of the road. And, and I got to thinking about this concept of pulling over to the side of the road. <laughs> And then I started doing research, uh, uh, doing, you know, looking at these things when people told me that in my, uh, you know, who were abductees who were, who were seeing me. And what they what it actually, what they saw was they were driving along. The wife says, look at that. And there's this UFO over on the side of the road on the left, and it goes across the road, and it hovers over a UF, over a field and, uh, and just stays there. And the guy then gets the idea that he has to stop the car. Wow. So of course he does. <laughs> over. They come, these beings walk down, they open up the door, they lead him out, they lead him into the UFO, up, I go up I, up into it, and they do this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, and they bring him back, bring him back in the car, and then he sort of comes to he looks over, and wham, that thing flew away at fantastic speed. Three hours later. Three, well, yeah, that's right, exactly, three hours later or two hours, whatever it is. That's what, uh, so people who see UFOs closely like that or in isolated areas, oftentimes there's a reason why that UFO was there, and there's a reason why they were there. And, and so uh, you, you, you can't just dismiss it as a UFO sighting. Each one has to be investigated carefully. Uh, well, one we have a chat room, and somebody in the chat room, and I thought this was a great question, and I, I, I'm going to ask it for him, and I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Uh, it says, is is there a theory as to selection of the abductee? Do they have similar traits? Do they share share similar traits in the abductees? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, there's been a, a lot of talk about Rh negative blood type. Uh, I asked uh, ten abductees what their blood type was. None of them had Rh negative. Hmm. See, the thing is. Um, it's 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 random. In other words, people get married at random yeah. to whoever they're getting want to get married to, right. whether it's a male or female or whatever. And if they have kids, uh, those kids, you know, they're, they're not going to have an Rh negative uh, blood if uh, if, if uh, perhaps if one of the uh, spouses didn't have it and all that. It can't be. Yeah. It's just too widespread. It, you can't find uh, those single kinds of traits. Having said that, there has to be something that has undergone some sort of a change in abductees' brains in order for them to communicate telepathically uh, with these other beings. All communications on board a UFO, I have to make that distinction, are done uh, are, are, are telepathic. Yeah. Telepathy is not a normal state of humankind. Right. If only, if a very small percent, if only one percent of all all people in this country in America were telepathic, we'd live in a different society. Oh yeah. The, ramif- yeah, the ramifications are are mind boggling. Uh, so, um, but it, that is not the case. So they had to 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 do something to allow that to happen. Uh, so, and, uh, and there's, I won't go into it, but there's other things too that, that, that are involved with the telepathic world. But, uh, but so there has to be that. Can that be measured from the outside or no? I don't know. And, and, and most abductees, you know, are, are not even aware that they're abductees. So, uh, um, but otherwise in terms of, of 
people used to tell me that only American Indians are abducted. Only people of Irish descent are abducted. <laughs> Only people who are related to uh, kings of England are abducted. Only people uh, who live in Trump. Those things. Yeah, exactly. You know, we have three minutes left, and this interview has flown by. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't believe it. It's I, crazy. It's, but I want I want Eddie to tell you his story real quick. Well, no, I I was one of those people who saw three. V-shaped or triangle-shaped UFOs flying at treetop level. Just you. No, it wasn't me. It was a handful of us little redneck kids throwing potatoes up at them <laughs> um, at about eight or nine o'clock at night. And I've seen five or six ships my whole life. And then we used to have this little dude that would come and visit us, and only me and one of my three brothers saw it. And we never talked about it till we were in our forties. But that when you were talking about that description of some of the abdi, uh, uh, abductees, I was like, "What?" <laughs> but, so here's a question. It, now we have two minutes left. So sorry about that. But I had to share it. Yeah, I wanted you to share uh, it. <laughs> is there a? Can you tell once there is the alien human hybrid? Is there an easy transition from their consciousness into humanity once they get here and they start blending in, as it were? Or is they, and I mean this sincerely, what I'm going to say, or is there a little bit of a, a like retardation, a transition period to acquiesce to uh, our consciousness once they get here as hybrids? Or do you know? Yeah, it's not acquiescing to our consciousness. It's just learning how to be a human. Because Ooh. even though they've learned about all sorts of human things while they were kids growing up on a UFO, yeah. living here is so infinitely more complicated wow. that they have to have an abductee with them at all times that they're around. Not at all times, but with them most of the time so they know uh, and this is what my book is about: how how to do how to go shopping, how to push a cart, uh, how to cook an egg. Uh, they might never have seen an egg before. Um, they uh, they know they have to learn how to when you go up to the cash register, uh, the and uh, the person behind the register says, "Hi, how you doing?" They can't just stand there and look at them. They've got to respond. Yeah. Uh, they have to say fine or something like that. They have to learn all the the subtle things that we just know automatically since we were babies because we just observed it of how to act human and that is what abductees are doing now they are not what a lot of abductees are doing now i should say not all um at teaching these beings who are living in apartments uh how to be human how to dress properly how to eat properly how to how to drive cars uh, uh, and all the all the things that that we do and abductees now a lot of their their roles are just teaching them uh, how to be human. Well, and Dr. Jacobs, really quick, we're making it pretty damn easy for them because we can't get our face out of an iPhone, <laughs> and so all they have to do is walk around and act dumb. Pretty much, yeah. Well, right. Well, I guess if they just walked around and looked down at an iPhone, yeah, right. people would <laughs> they wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, so we're making it easy for them. So that's our show. Thank you, Doctor David Jacobs. I know Tony's. Well, the thing here, here's here's the thing is, uh, Doctor Jacobs is going to be at Contact in the Desert, yeah. uh, June third through the sixth. Uh, you're going to be one of the speakers, I believe. Wow. I'm giving a, uh, a, a talk, two workshops, and I'll be, I'll be on a panel discussion also. This is great. And you can go to ufoabduction.com, ufoabduction.com. Check yeah, out all. Singular, not plural. Yeah, not plural. Uh, and please, please, please go and, and pick up these books, yep. uh, Walking Among Us, The Alien Plan to Control Humanity. Mm -hmm. And if you've missed this show, came oh. in halfway through, go to our YouTube channel, listen to it, send us a comment. Uh, and if you have something you want to send over, and I, I try to find uh, any social medias. Do you have any social medias at all? Well, uh, sometimes I'm on Twitter. Uh, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, sometimes I have a Facebook page, uh, uh, two pages. One was uh, created by a, a kid in India that people go to, but I have my, my regular uh a Facebook page also. And, uh, awesome. And like that. Perfect. Thank you well, so thank much. Well, thank you so much. Thank we you. so appreciate it. Yeah.
And uh, definitely, if you want to, again, listen to us on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, go to truthbetoldwebtv.com. Check out all of our upcoming shows. We have some great shows and great guests for you, just like Dr. David Jacobs right here on Truth, Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Tony Sweet. I'm Eddie Connor, And we're out of here. Stick around for Char Margolis with Char Vision. Thank you so much. We'll Bye see y'all. you next time.